Visit grizzly.com for our bear crawl mobile base lineup. My wife and I have been wanting a new mantle clock to go for our fireplace for some time now. And she helped me design one that has a really neat modern look to it. It features two sides which are connected with a stretcher with half lap joints. And if you'd like to build this mantle clock, I'll have plans available for a small fee and you'll see a link to them in the description below. I have some eight quarter cherry that was left over from another project and this is gonna be perfect for the legs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is chop the legs into rough length. The sides only need to be an inch and a quarter thick, but like I said earlier, this lumber that I'm using is eight quarter. So it's around two inches thick. So instead of just taking all of the excess thickness off at the planer, I'm gonna remove most of it at the bandsaw and then I'll take it the rest of the way using the planer. And this wood also has some sap wood on one face. So the face that I'm gonna resaw off of or the face that I'm gonna remove is the face that has the majority of the sap wood. For the stretcher and the side rails, I'm gonna use five quarter cherry, and I should be able to get everything from this one section of the wood that I'm cutting now. So now that I have the lumber dimensioned to rough length and rough width, and also rough thickness for both the rails and the stretcher. I need to next flatten one face and then I'll plane everything to its uh, final thickness at the planer. And then I can start cutting everything to final width and final length. Now that I have the stretcher and side rail lumber dimension to thickness, I need to square one edge to one of the faces and then cut them to their final width. The ends of the stretcher are gonna eventually be cut at an angle, but uh, I'm gonna cut this to its final length and I'm gonna leave the ends at 90 degrees for now. Now that I have all the mortises out of the way and all the legs and also in the rails, I need to start working on the loose tendon material. And for that, I'm gonna use some material that was resawn off of the legs that I did earlier on in the video. So, recycle. Once you have your tennis stock dimensioned to thickness and width and you've rounded the ends to the appropriate radius for the mortises that you're using, you need to cut them to length. And the best way that I've found to cut tenon stock to length is to use a table saw sled at the table saw. Now, I got this idea by watching David Marks on Woodworks. It was a, television, a woodworking television show that was on several years ago, back when there used to actually be decent woodworking shows on television but uh, I, I found that this is the best way to do it.
There are two more cuts that I want to make to the stretcher, and that's to taper each end of the stretcher to the same angle as the legs. The next piece that I'm going to work on is the component that's going to get glued onto the bottom of the stretcher, which is going to support the clock mechanism. So last night I glued this bottom arch piece onto the stretcher and I thought about using a dowel to join the bottom arch piece to the stretcher, but I think because this is long grain to long grain, this uh, glue joint should be strong enough. It's been so cold in the wood shop that it's actually below the chalk temperature for the glue that I'm using to glue this together. So I actually did the glue ups inside the house and I didn't film those. So I'll just tell you guys what I did. The first thing I did was glue up the two sides of the clock uh, and I let those uh, cure overnight. And then I glued the two sides together with the stretcher. Nothing complicated. So the next thing I'm gonna start working on, and it's actually the last thing I need to do, is make the top. I'm going to put a 45 degree chamfer on the underside of each side of the top and to try to reduce chip out I'm going to back up the cut with a piece of scrap wood and I'm also going to do this in more than one pass. I elongated the holes for the two front screws to allow for a little bit of expansion and contraction as the seasons change.
So if you'd like to build this mental clock, I have plans available for a small fee, and you'll find a link to the plans in the video description below. So that's all I have for this week. I really hope you enjoyed the build, and I'll see you next time.